University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Tonight sees the penultimate match in the first round of this contest. Twelve teams are through to the second round. Eight have gone home. Four losing teams will return to compete in the playoffs, and we already know that Emmanuel College Cambridge will be one of them. In order to be guaranteed a place alongside them, 150 is the score to beat. Now, the University of East London is a former polytechnic which gained university status in 1992 and has campuses based in Stratford and Docklands. Alumni include the presenter Jimmy Doherty, the Turner Prize-nominated Chapman Brothers, the track sprinter Adam Jamili, the politicians Rupa Huck and Kate Osamore, and the rapper Tinchy Strider, representing around 14,000 students and with an average age of 36. Let's meet the East London team. Hi, I'm Chloe Connect. I'm from Exeter, New Hampshire, and I'm studying computer science. Hi, I'm Stephen Harvey. I'm originally from Wishaw in Scotland, and I'm studying English literature. And this is their captain. I'm Chris O'Mahony. I'm from Bandon in West Cork in Ireland, and I'm studying for a professional doctorate in clinical psychology. Hi, I'm Scott Danielson. I'm originally from East Renfrewshire in Scotland, and I'm doing a PhD in public health. Manchester University is an amalgamation of various institutions, the first of which was a mechanics institute in 1824. Since then, its students have included the astrophysicist Brian Cox, the actors Benedict Cumberbatch, Mira Sayal and Toby Jones, and the comedians Rick Mail and Aide Edmondson. Tonight's team have an average age of 26. They're representing around 40,000 fellow students and an institution which has had a formidable reputation in this competition in the past. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm studying for a PhD in mathematical logic and I'm from Chinkford, uh, but now I live in Glossop. Hi, I'm Georgia Lynott. I'm originally from Burnley and I'm reading for a PhD in applied maths. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm James Ross. I'm from Coventry and I'm reading for a master's in classics and ancient history. Hi, I'm Joe Hanson. I'm from Gravesend in Kent and I'm studying for a PhD in data intensive science. OK, the rules are the same as ever, so fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. Of unknown origin, what three-letter word dates to the 1920s in the sense of a live performance by a musician or group? In recent Manchester years... Manchester Lynott. Gig. Gig is correct, yes. <laughs> the first set of bonuses, Manchester, are on dramatic theory. Used prescriptively by French neoclassical dramatists, the three unities of time, place and action are derived from the poetics of which ancient Greek author? Aristotle. Correct. Whether he knew the unities and rejected them by design or deviated from them by happy ignorance is useless to inquire. Those words of Dr Johnson refer to which English literary figure? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <laughs> Shakespeare. It is. First performed in Paris in 1830, the poetic tragedy Hermani was notable in renouncing the unities of time and place. Which major figure of the Romantic movement was its author? No, sorry. That was by Victor Hugo. Ten points for this. The artist Diego Velasquez was an almost exact contemporary of which English political leader who requested the portrait painter Sir Peter Lee... <laughs> Manchester Lynott. Oliver Cromwell. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on a shared name now, Manchester. From a prefix denoting a relatively large size, what five-letter computing term denotes an instruction written to be equivalent to a chosen set of instructions? Five-letter five letters. letters. Order, scale. Order? No, it's a macro, short for macro oh, instruction. Right. Sorry. In ancient Rome, macro was a Praetorian prefect said to have helped Caligula come to power by smothering which emperor whose death had been prematurely reported? Tiberius. Correct. The adjective macrosmatic indicates that which of the senses is well-developed? Taste, smell. 
Uh, smell. Smell is correct. Yeah. Ten points for this. Listen carefully. Add the lowest perfect number to the number of planets of our solar system that have moons. Divide this total by the number of noble gases with an atomic number of less than 20. What single digit number results? Manchester and Tau. Eight. Anyone like to buzz from East London? East London Harvey. Seven. No, it's four. Ten points for this. More than 3,800 metres in height, the Uspalata Pass links which two countries? It lies at the boundary of the province of Mendoza and the region of Valparaiso. East London Danielson. Argentina and Chile. Correct. <laughs> so your first bonuses, East London, are on British birds. In each case, give the common name from the description. All three names end in the same five letters. Fringilla celebs, one of the commonest British breeding birds, the male is distinguished by its blue-grey cap and russet or pinkish underparts. So I imagine it's finch. Chaffinch, you know, chaffinch, goldfinch. Chaffinch? Chaffinch is correct. Secondly, Chloris, Chloris. Here the specific reflects the bird's common name and appearance. Give me some other finches. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. Goldfinch? Mm -hmm. Do we know another one? No. No. <laughs> goldfinch. No, it's a green finch. And finally, Pyriola Pyriola. The male has a distinctive pinkish-red breast with a black cap and tail. Isn't that goldfinch? Isn't that goldfinch? Bullfinch. What? Bullfinch. Bullfinch. Yes. Bullfinch. Bullfinch is right. Ten points for this. <laughs> Greek words meaning preserver of flesh are the ultimate derivation of the name... Manchester and Tal. Sarcophagus. No, you lose five points. ...are the ultimate... Derivation of the name of what substance? An extract of coal tar used to protect timber. The term comes from an earlier usage associated with the smoking of meat. East London Danielson. Creosote. Correct. <laughs> Your bonus is East London this time are on pairs of words that differ only in that one of them begins with the additional letters AT, for example, om and atom. In each case, give both words from the descriptions. Firstly, a habitual and spasmodic contraction of the muscles and a variety of Greek used around ancient Athens. Spasm and spartan. Spasm and Spartan, we're going for. No, it's tick and attic. Oh, oh, right. Secondly, a long inlet of a sea formed by the submergence of a river valley and the two upper cavities of the heart. So there, um, atria. Atrium, atrium, atrium. We have atria, but we don't have the other. All you have to do is put AT in front of it. It's rear and atria. So finally, you get a personal pronoun that corresponds to the German word man and to make amends for a misdeed. Tone under tone. Tone under tone. No, it's one and a tone. Um. So you can't get the points, I'm afraid. We're going to take a picture around now. If your picture starter, you'll see the outline of a sovereign nation. Ten points if you can identify that country. Manchester and Tal. Gambia. No. East London, Danielson. Vietnam. No, it's Panama. So we'll take the picture bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points at stake for this starter question. Referring to the Dutch astronomer who discovered it in 1621, what name is given to the law relating the angles of incidence and refraction of light? Manchester and Tunnel. Snell's Law. Snell's Law is correct. <laughs> so you get the picture bonuses. Three more geographical locations that share their names with types of hat. I want the name of the location in each case. Firstly, for five, this historic state of the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That type of hat. 
Yeah. <laughs> Tyrol. It is Tyrol, Tyrol and it's a Tyrolean hat or Alpine hat. Secondly, this spa town, I only need a one word name here. Baden? I've never heard of a Baden. No, 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 it's a Homburg. Oh. And finally, this city. Um, is there a town to this hat? Fez, maybe. Yeah, yeah, Fez, yeah, Fez. Yeah, Fez. Fez. Fez is correct, yeah. yes. Ten points for this. Begun during the reign of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, the Shalimar... Manchester Ross. Taj Mahal. You lose five points. Sorry. The Shalimar Gardens are in which city? Some 50 kilometres west of the Indian city of Amritsar. It's the second largest city of Pakistan after Karachi. East London Danielson. Lahore. Correct. <laughs> you could take the lead if you get these bonuses. They're on astronomy. In astronomy, what term denotes both a small force that modifies the simple motion of an object and the effect produced, such as a change in its path of motion? Um, vector? No, it's perturbation. In our solar system, what point in the orbit of a planet is said to advance when perturbations cause a disturbance in the planet's orbital motion? <laughs> the um, perigee. No, it's the perihelion. And finally, a residual advance in the perihelion of which planet provided an important test of Einstein's general theory of relativity? Copernican Mercury. Mercury or Jupiter? Jupiter. Jupiter? No, it was Mercury. Ten points for this. Holding several clusters of bright young giant stars, the Tarantula Nebula is in what satellite galaxy of the Milky Way? It hosted a supernova seen from Earth in... Manchester Hansen. Uh, the Large Magellanic Cloud. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses, Manchester, are on the author Rosemary Hill. Firstly, who's the subject of Rosemary Hill's 2008 biography, God's Architect? Born 1812, he was a leading figure in the English Roman Catholic revival as well as the Gothic revival. Uh, like, ring a bell for Gaudi. Oh, Gaudi? It could be, like... Oh, it's got like a Gaudi, sorry. <laughs> Gaudi. Gaudi? Yeah. Oh, really? It's terrible. <laughs> it is absolutely terrible. Yes, it was Barcelona, wrong city altogether. Uh, Pugin is what I was looking for. A 2009 work by Hill examines the cultural influence of what structure? A reviewer describes it as featuring in the arts from Wordsworth to Spinal Tap via Thomas Hardy and Barbara Hepworth. Is it, is it Stonehenge? Yeah. Yes. 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 Stonehenge. Stonehenge is right. In a review of a 2017 biography by Sally Bedell Smith, which public figure did Hill describe as trapped in a role he didn't choose, doing things he doesn't like for people who don't much appreciate them? Um, Prince Charles? Prince Philip? I don't know. Prince Philip. <laughs> Maybe. Prince Philip. No, it's Prince Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Ten points for this. Which French painter did Picasso describe as the father of us all, born in Aix-en-Provence, one of his stated ambitions was to make Impressionism something ah. solid and enduring. Manchester and Tar. Monet. No, you lose five points. Something solid and enduring, like the art of the museums, and his notable works include depictions of bathers, card players, and numerous studies of Mont Saint Victoire. East London O'Mahony. Siraj? No, it's Cézanne. Ten points for this. What was the precise given name of the society figure who wrote the 1778 epistolary novel, The Sylph, the wife of the fifth Duke of Devonshire? She was the title figure of the 2008 film, The Duchess, in which she was played by Kira Knightley. East London Harvey. Uh, Georgiana, Duchess of Devonshire. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on 18th century furniture designers, East London. Which designer's work is characterised by inlaid ornamentation motifs, including the Prince of Wales' feathers and chairbacks 
in the shape of a shield. He died in London in 1786. Sheraton. No, that was Heppelwhite. Born in Stockton on Tees, which exponent of neoclassicism is best known for the cabinet makers and upholsterer's drawing book, published in the early 1790s? Chippendale. Chippendale. Chippendale? No, that was Sheraton. <laughs> and finally, which Yorkshireman influenced Sheraton and Heppelwhite with his 1754 work, The Gentleman and Cabinet Makers Director? He has been called the Shakespeare of English furniture makers. Chippendale. Chippendale. That is Chippendale, yes. <laughs> right, we're going to take a music round. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of classical music. Ten points if you can name its composer. It's London Harvey. A sound song? No, anyone like to buzz from Manchester? You can hear a bit more. <laughs> Manchester Linet. At uh, list. No, it's Rachmaninoff's oh. Prelude in C sharp minor, or part of it. Uh, we'll come to the music bonuses in a moment or two, so in the meantime, here's a starter question. What term for a type of human settlement links Auburn in a poem of 1770 by Oliver Goldsmith with a 1783 work by George Crabb? The latter was written partly in response to Goldsmith's somewhat idealistic portrayal of rural life. East London, Harvey. The village. Village is correct, yes. Now, East London, you get the music bonuses. You'll recall that uh, you just heard some Rachmaninoff performed, in that case, by Rachmaninoff himself in the early 20th century. Three more recordings for your bonuses by Rachmaninoff, this time playing works by other composers. For the points, you just have to name each composer. Firstly... Chopin. It is the minute waltz, and secondly... Schubert. It is Schubert, his impromptu in A-flat. And finally, the original composer of this work, which was arranged for piano by Rachmaninoff. Rimsky-Korsakov. It is the flight of the bumblebee. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. William Haig and George Osborne under David Cameron, Peter Mandelson under Gordon Brown, and... Manchester Ross. First Secretary of State. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on quotations, Manchester. All three answers begin with the same hyphenated prefix. According to an 1859 work by the didactic author Samuel Smiles, the root of all genuine growth in the individual is the spirit of what? Humanity? Self help. Correct. Oh. Yeah. In the preface to Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte writes that conventionality is not morality. What did she say is not religion? Self um, control, self confidence, self regard. Mm. Uh, Self-control. No, it's self-righteousness. Oh, yes. And finally, give the hyphenated two-word term that comes next in this extract from the US Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be what? Self-evident. Self-evident is correct. Right, ten points for this. <laughs> Aiming to portray, quote, a wild, sad life and the beautiful character that grew out of it, Elizabeth Gaskell published in 1857 a biography of which literary figure who had died two years earlier. East London Harvey. Charlotte Bronte. Correct. <laughs> you take the lead. Your bonuses are on a biological phenomenon. What term denotes the wave-like movement of muscles by which food and liquids are moved through the gastrointestinal tract? Peristalsis. Correct. Segmented worms which use peristaltic locomotion for movement belong to which phylum? Mm. 
No idea. The annelids. Peristalsis helps finally to transport which clear body fluid containing white blood cells through a network of vessels and nodes? Lymph. Correct. Ten points for this. What word is common to the names of the largest city in the Brazilian state of Bahia and a country in Latin America that borders Guatemala and Honduras? East London Danielson. Salvador. Salvador is right. <laughs> Three questions on the Pacific Theatre in World War II for your bonuses. Which sea of the Southwest Pacific gives its name to a battle of May 1942 in which both sides used aircraft carriers in action for the first time? So what's on that side? Um, there's the Sea of Japan, there's the Yellow Sea, there's... Um... What do we go for? Come on. Yeah. Yellow Sea? Um, Yellow Sea. That's the Battle of the Coral Sea. Which decisive naval battle of June 1942 is named after an island 1,100 miles west of Pearl Harbor that the Japanese attempted unsuccessfully to capture? Nominate Danielson. Midway. Midway is correct. In August 1942, US forces began a campaign to recapture Guadalcanal, an island in which present-day country? Come on. Philippines, then. Philippines? No, it's in the Solomon Islands. Right, we're going to take a second picture round. For your picture starter, you'll see a promotional still from a television drama series. Ten points if you can give me the programme's title. Manchester Ross. Bride's Head Revisited. Correct. <laughs> that was in the top ten of the BFI TV 100, a list of programmes selected by the British Film Institute as the UK's top 100 television programmes of the 20th century. Your picture bonuses are three more dramas that made that list. Five points for each you can name. Firstly... Mm. Our Friends in the North, I think. Our Friends in the North. I think so. Our Friends in the North. Correct. Secondly, the title of this specific one-off drama, first broadcast as part of an anthology series. Is that anything? No, sorry, we don't know. That's from Cathy Come Home. And finally... Um, that's House of Cards, isn't it? House of Cards. House of Cards is correct. Ten points for this. In geometry, what curve is formed by the intersection of a plane with both branches of a double cone? Manchester and Tal. Hyperbola. Correct. These bonuses are linked by a word. Firstly, for five points, which novel by William Faulkner describes events in the early 20th century from the perspectives of different members of the Compson family of Mississippi? No. Um, <laughs> Sound and the Fury. Correct. Which English playwright wrote in The Mourning Bride in 1697 that heaven has no rage like love to hatred turned, nor hell a fury like a woman scorned? It's not Congreve, is it? No. <laughs> no, it's not. Congreve. Correct. In his poem In Memoriam, Tennyson describes time as a maniac scattering dust. What does he describe as a fury slinging flame? Memory. <laughs> Come on. Love. No, it's life, but you've retaken the lead. Ten points for this. What given name links the poets who wrote the Battle of Sheremur, the Ring and the Book, and the White Goddess? Manchester and Tar. John. No, and you're on to bus from East London. East London Harvey. Robert. Robert is correct, yes. Burns, Graves and so on. So you get a set of bonuses now on world politics in 1999. In February 1999, who took office for the first time as president of Venezuela? Chavez. Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez. 
Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez is correct. In October 1999, who took power in Pakistan following a coup d'etat? He was president from 2001 to 2008. Nominate Danielson. General Musharraf. Correct, Pervez Musharraf. On the last day of 1999, who announced his resignation as president of the Russian Federation? His successor granted him immunity from future prosecution. Putin. It's Putin. Putin. No, that was Yeltsin. Putin's still there. Uh, ten points for this. In biochemistry, what metal ion is at the centre of the porphyrin ring of chlorophyll? Manchester and tar. Magnesium. Correct. <laughs> Get these, you'll retake the lead. They're on element names approved in recent years by IUPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Given the symbol NH, what is the name of the element 113? Nihonium. Nominate Antal. Nihonium. Correct. Given the symbol MC, what is the name of element 115? Moscovium. Moscovium? Moscovium is correct. Given the symbol TS, what is the name of element 117? Tennessine. 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 Tennessine is correct. Ten points for this. Which river flows through the Spanish city of Toledo and is the longest of the ah, Iberian... Manchester and Tar. The Targus. The Targus is correct. Right, you get a set of bonuses now on geography. In each case, give the predominant cardinal direction in which one would travel in the shortest straight line from the first city to the second. For example, Liverpool to Manchester is east. Firstly, Marrakesh to Casablanca. West? Is, is, yeah. It's kind of like right on the coast. Yes. in the coast. So, north yeah. or west coast. <laughs> it could be... Yeah, it, west, right? West, yeah. yeah. West. No, that's north. Yeah, Secondly, right. Hiroshima to Osaka. Um, east. east. Oh. And that's the gong. East London have 135. Manchester have 155. <laughs> well, you left it pretty late, Manchester, <laughs> but uh, East London, you had the lead for much of that match. You can certainly go home with your heads held high. Uh, Manchester, 155. We should look forward to seeing you in round two. Thank you for joining us. I hope you can join us next time for the last of the first round matches. But until then, it's goodbye from East London University. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from Manchester University. Goodbye. 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 And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>